Welcome to Propeller U. In this training module, we will run through best practices for ground control. In pursuit of accurate data, there is no looking past ground control. Ground control is a go-to option for turning drone data into highly accurate survey grade models. When looking at including ground control for your survey, it's important to understand that a 3D model is no more or less accurate than the data used to generate it, which is why Propeller adopted the adage of accuracy in, accuracy out. Almost every aspect of a drone survey job from the drone and camera used to the ground control implemented can affect the accuracy of the final data, which is why it is important to consider your accuracy requirements when planning your mission. While there are other technologies that provide improved accuracy in the air, such as onboard R2K, these do not automatically translate to the same accuracy on the ground. Terrain models corrected with onboard RTK data are more susceptible to errors compared to models generated using ground control points. Combined errors of 10 degrees or more in your drone's measured pitch or roll can introduce tens of centimeters of error in the final model if no GCPs are in place, making it significantly more difficult to achieve centimeter ground accuracy with onboard RTK or PPK platforms. In this graph, we can see the difference of a site flown seven times with arrow points designated as ground control versus a flight flown utilizing geotags only. The absolute accuracy of your survey with GCPs can be reined in from meters to centimeters, as can be seen here with an example of a planar shift between data sets generated with arrow points as GCPs and those just using onboard geotags. Now that we've discussed why ground control is important, and you've determined that the accuracy requirements of your project warrants utilizing ground control, we'll now look at what ground control looks like. Whether you plan on using arrow points, utilizing your own targets, or using a combination of both for ground control, your targets or markers should meet two simple criteria in terms of their design layout. First, they should be of a high contrast design to be easily distinguishable from the surrounding terrain, such as white spray paint on asphalt. Second, they should have clear geometry indicating the measured center of the marker with the most common marker designs being a checkerboard, which is incorporated into the arrow point design and functions as a smart ground control point, a cross or X, or a crosshair, as seen in these example images from a drone survey. Existing survey benchmarks and monuments can be used, granted they meet the criteria for ground control design we looked at. Ground control points consisting of existing monument and benchmark caps, PK nails or mag nails, can be utilized as long as the center of the mark design is easily identifiable. In addition to having a high contrast design with an easily identifiable center point, your ground control points will also need to be large enough to be distinguished in photos taken by a drone 100 meters above the ground surface. The accuracy of outputs generated by photogrammetry are primarily limited by the ground sample distance or GSD of the provided imagery, and the same is true for aerial surveys utilizing ground control. The GSD is a real-world size of a pixel in your image, and for most flights, it's between 1 and 10 centimeters. If the GSD of your aerial imagery is 5 centimeters, and the painted lines defining one of your ground control markers are only three centimeters wide, there is a fair chance that your GCP's geometry will be unrecognizable. Being sure to choose a flight altitude to meet a GSD where your markers are clearly definable is crucial. Otherwise, they are likely to be impossible to recognize during processing, as seen in these example images from a data set with a low GSD. Visit our knowledge base and blog to learn more about ground sample distance. You can even calculate GSD with Propeller's GSD calculator. Now that we know what our ground control should look like and why it's important, let's dive into ground control placement. There are quite a few variables to consider with ground control amounts and placement. It's nearly impossible to give specific requirements on how many ground control points are needed because every site and survey is different. A site with drastic elevation changes will require more ground control than a relatively flat site, and ground control placement on a linear site will look quite different than a rectangular site. In general, the more ground control that is placed, the better results you'll get. At the very minimum, three GCPs are required for processing. However, increasing the minimum to five GCPs can improve accuracy on smaller surveys. For larger sites, it will be necessary to implement more ground control points. If you have questions on ground control amounts or placement, be sure to reach out to your customer success engineer or our support team. If you are using arrow points, we recommend using the full set of arrow points, even for smaller sites to increase the accuracy. We like to use the analogy of your site like a tarp on a windy day. In order to keep the tarp from blowing away, we need stakes, which will be ground control, to keep the tarp in place. You should start by placing the stakes on the corners of the tarp, but just like a tarp, if there are no stakes in the center, the wind will continue to blow the tarp around. Similarly, it's important to ensure that you have ground control coverage on the perimeter and corners of your site, along with coverage towards the center. While it's important to place ground control along the perimeter of a survey, it's important to also be able to see ground control points in the center of survey photos, this means that the ground control shouldn't be the absolute edge of a flight boundary. 
Take a look at these examples on ideal placement of ground control on a site. In the first example, the ground control is missing from the protruding area on the bottom, which is not ideal. In the second example, the ground control isn't adequately covering the perimeter of the site. The third example is displaying an ideal placement of ground control. Notice the perimeter is adequately covered along with the protruding areas and the middle of the site. When placing ground control, it's important to consider how the drone will view the ground control. A GCP will be unusable if it's obscured by trees, buildings, or fences, so make sure to avoid these types of obstructions. It's also important to place the ground control points on a flat surface. You want to ensure that the ground control is going to return an accurate elevation, and this can be skewed if the ground control point is placed on large rocks, vehicles, tall vegetation, or any other objects. It might go without saying, but it's also extremely important to ensure that your ground control is actually within your survey area. It's a good practice to double check your drone flight pattern to make sure that your ground control is directly within the flight path. This can be planned out beforehand by looking at the flight mission on your drone controller or other mission planning software. You can submit your ground control information in step three of the data upload process. Please see our data upload video for more information on uploading data if you are unfamiliar with that process. Based on your workflow and the data you've uploaded, you will see different options for ground control. There are essentially four options for adding ground control within the platform. Adding arrow points, uploading a CSV file, adding arrow point surveys and a CSV file, and not adding ground control. If you are utilizing the PPK workflow, you will only see the options to add the arrow point survey or to add the arrow point survey along with the CSV file. Adding arrow points. Begin by first selecting the arrow point survey which is associated with your uploaded survey data. These will be marked with the location, date, and time of the arrow point survey and need to match the survey data uploaded from the drone. Next, you will choose how the arrow point survey should be processed, either with the Propeller Corrections Network, Global Survey Benchmark, or Rhinex Upload. If you are uploading a CSV file or including a CSV file with an arrow point survey, it needs to be in a specific format with columns for name, easting or longitude, northing or latitude, elevation, and purpose. You can download a template of the CSV directly from the platform. Once you have filled in the CSV file, you can simply drop the file back into the platform and the GCP points will populate and be shown below. From here, you can confirm the correct location of the GCPs and leave any comments that will be helpful for your data success team before submitting. The final option of no ground control isn't generally recommended, unless you simply need an orthophoto and accuracy is not a factor. Once everything is entered correctly, click proceed to continue with the data uploading process. There are just a few limitations when it comes to working with ground control. 40 ground control points will count as a single data set and uploading more will consume more credits. And while you can submit unlimited checkpoints, no individual upload can exceed 80 ground control points. In this training module, we discuss some of the best practices for ground control, including what ground control is and why it is important in the propeller PPK workflow. We also covered some best practices for ground control placement and uploading to the platform. Hope you found this video helpful. And if you have further questions on ground control, make sure to check out the knowledge base.